Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be implementing procedural terrain generation. This tutorial is actually going to be based off the algorithm presented in this tutorial here which I've linked in the description and although it claims to be describing Perlin noise I've had a lot of people telling me that this isn't actually Perlin noise but whatever it is I've found it to be quite a nice simple algorithm which can create some very nice looking random terrains. So let's jump into the code and the first thing we're going to do is to create a new class in the terrains package which is called heights generator and this is going to be doing all of the generating for the terrain and the first thing I'm going to define is how high or low the terrain can be and I'm going to set an amplitude of 70 meaning it can go as high as 70 and as low as minus 70. I'm then going to create a random object for all the random generation stuff that we're going to be doing and we're also going to need a seed which is an int. Then in the heights generator constructor we're going to set the seed to a random number which means we'll get a different terrain every time we run the game and I'm going to set it to a number between 0 and 1 billion so that's a 1 with 9 zeros and I'll explain why we've set a limit later. Then we're going to need the all important method which is generate height. It takes in the x and z position of a vertex and it returns the height of that vertex that we've generated but for now we're just going to return 1 so all the vertices for now we'll have a height of 1. Then in the terrain class we need to make sure that the generate terrain method now uses the height generator instead of the height map that we were using previously so we'll create a new height generator. Then the vertex count no longer needs to use the height map um, I'm just going to set that for now to 128 you can use whatever you want though and the get height method no longer gets the height from the height map it's just going to get it from the height generator so it's going to return generator dot generate height and it takes in the x and z position of the vertex. Um, the calculate normal method also no longer needs to use the height map, it needs to use the generator, the heights generator instead. And then there just are a couple more occurrences here where we need to substitute in generator instead of image. And we should now be able to go ahead and run that and the terrain should now be generated using the heights generator which will mean that we'll get a completely flat terrain with all the vertices having a height of 1. And um, if you want you can go back into the terrain class and tidy up all the height map stuff and get rid of it if you don't want it anymore because it's a bit of a mess in there now um, but I'm going to leave that up to you. So at the heart of any sort of procedural generation is randomness. So we're going to create a random number generator in the heights generator class and I'm going to call this method get noise because it's basically a noise function. This method will take in an x and z position and it will return a random number between 1 and minus 1. For example a 2D example of this would look like this where any given x value gives a pretty much random output. However, it's extremely important that this noise function always gives the same output value for a certain input. So in this example, an x value of 3 gives an output of 0.5, and although that 0.5 is a completely random number, it mustn't change. Any time that we put an x value of 3 into this function, it returns 0.5. We can still have different noise functions every time we run the game, but once the game is running, the noise function mustn't change because the height of the terrain vertices shouldn't be changing. So it's the same for our noise function here. If we put in the values 5 and 14 for x and z, it will return a random output, but any time that we put in 5 and 14, it should return the same random value. Now the way that I've implemented this is perhaps not a very nice way of doing it, and if anyone knows a more elegant way of doing this, then please let me know. But what I'm going to do is to set the seed of the random based on the x, z and seed values and then return the first random float that it generates which would be a number between 0 and 1 so I'm going to convert it to be a number between minus 1 and 1. So for any given x, z and seed values this would always return the same value because the seed of the random would always be the same and it always returns the very first float. However, I found that similar seed values return similar first floats, which means that neighbouring x and z values would actually give very similar outputs and the terrain wouldn't appear very random at all. So I'm just going to multiply in a few big numbers here so that even a small change in the x or z values would cause a completely different seed to be used. You don't want to make these values too high though, otherwise you'd risk creating a seed whose value is greater than the maximum int value in Java, which would obviously crash the game and that's the same reason why we didn't set the seed variable too high. 
Let's now just test that we've got this working. So in the constructor, I'm going to print out the value generated when the inputs are five and 14. And I'm then going to copy and paste that to make sure that it gives the same output when the same inputs are used. And then we'll test it one more time with slightly different inputs. So let's go ahead and run that and see what we get. So if you have a look down in the console, you should get two numbers, two random numbers that are exactly the same because they had the same input. And then a third number, which is completely different even though there was just a slight change in the inputs there. So let's now just get rid of these tests and we're now going to use the get noise method as the output for the generate height method. So every vertex is going to have a completely random height between minus amplitude and amplitude. So if I run that, you can see um, the terrain should look pretty crazy with a lot of random vertex heights. So at the moment, our terrain is clearly extremely random and extremely rough. So what we're going to try and do now is to make it at least a little bit smoother. The way that we're going to do this is that instead of setting the height of each vertex to the output of the random number generator for that coordinate, we're instead going to calculate the height based on the average of the random number generator's output for that vertex and all neighboring vertices. This is exactly the same concept as you would use in an image smoothing filter, which as you can see, makes the output look just a little bit less random. So let's now implement this in the code and we're going to create a new method here called get smooth noise and this still takes in the x and z position of the vertex and it returns the averaged height for that vertex. So first we're going to get the values of the corners, the outputs of the get noise method for all the corners. So there are four corners, so four get noise methods and these corners are going to have the least effect on the output so I'm going to divide them by 16. Then we need to put in the vertices, uh, the coordinates of these corners. So that's x minus one, z minus one. Then there's x plus one, z minus one, x minus one, z plus one. And the final corner has a coordinate of x plus one, z plus one. So that's the values for the corners. Now we're going to get the output of the get noise method for all the side vertices. So again, four side vertices, four get noise methods. And these are a bit more important. So I'm only dividing them by eight. Then the coordinates are x minus 1, z, x plus 1, z, x, z minus 1, and x, z plus 1. So that's all the sides done. And now the final vertex is the one in the middle. And this, of course, just has a coordinate of x, z, and it's the most important. So I'm only going to divide that by 4. And then the total output is just going to be the values for all the corners plus all the sides plus that center vertex. And that will give us the smooth averaged output for all the nearby vertices. So if we use that now instead of the get noise method and run it, you can see there's a little bit of an improvement. There's a bit more structure to the train and it's not quite as crazy and as random as it was before. What we've done so far is to create a function something like this, where for any integer input value, our function returns a height value. Up until now, we haven't really worried about what happens between these points because so far we've only been using integer values but what we're going to do now is to interpolate between the points so that we can use float inputs like 3.6 for example and we would still get an output. There are various methods which we could use to interpolate between two points, the easiest of which would be linear interpolation but that doesn't really look very natural. So we're going to be using cosine interpolation which basically creates a cosine like curve between every two points. So let's start off by creating a method to carry out cosine interpolation on two float values. So we've got float A and float B. We want to interpolate between the two of them using the blend factor. And it's basically going to be like linear interpolation, except the blend factor first gets put through a cosine function. So we're now going to do a cos function to create the new blend factor, which is going to be F here. Uh, so we're going to carry out the cos function, which will return a value between minus one and one. By doing one minus that, we're going to get a value between zero and two. And by multiplying that by 0 0.5, that will give us a value between zero and one, just like the original blend factor would have been. And now that we've got that, we can just carry out usual linear interpolation with this new blend factor. So it's just the usual formula. So A multiplied by one minus F plus B multiplied by F. So let's now create a new method called get interpolated noise. And this is going to take in a float X and Z position and it will return the height 
based on the interpolated height from the four nearest points in the noise function. So first we need to first calculate um, the integer part of the x value and the integer part of the z value, that's the bit before the decimal point. And we also need to calculate the fractional part of the x value and the fractional part of the z value. So that's the part after the decimal point. And you can see an example of that in the top right corner. Now that we've got those values, we are able to calculate the height of the nearest four points in the noise function to this xz position. So we're going to get the height of the points v1, v2, v3 and v4, as you can see in the diagram in the top right corner there. And to get the height of those points, we're going to call the get smooth noise function. Then we're going to put in the necessary coordinates. So v1 is just int x int z, v2 is int x plus 1 int z, v3 is int x int z plus 1, and v4 is int x plus 1 int z plus 1, as you can see in the diagram. Now we're going to interpolate between v1 and v2 and then v3 and v4 and this is going to calculate the height at two new points i1 and i2 which you can see in the diagram there and now that we've got the height at the points i1 and i2 we can interpolate between i1 and i2 to find out the height at the xz position so we're going to interpolate between points i1 and i2 and we're going to use the frac z value as the blend factor and that will give us the height of that xz position. So let's now use the get interpolated noise instead of the get smooth noise and go ahead and run that and at the moment it doesn't seem like anything's changed. It actually looks pretty much exactly the same as it did before. The reason that there's no change yet is that we're still just putting in integer inputs and so we're still just getting the values of the points out and all the interpolation between the points is irrelevant. But if we were to divide all our inputs by 4, for example, and then put them into the function, we'd start to see some of those interpolating curves in the output. So let's try that now in the code and divide both of our inputs by 4f. And now when we go ahead and run the game, you'll see that we're starting to see a little bit of an improvement. The more we divide our inputs by, the more we start to see those smooth interpolating curves in our output. So you can test this out in your code by trying out different numbers here. So I'm going to try dividing by 8 now, and if I run that, you can see that the terrain is now extremely smooth. So the higher the number we use to divide our inputs by, the lower the frequency of the function's output. And by frequency, I'm referring to the frequency in waveforms, where the frequency is basically how quickly the wave goes up and down. And it's the same for our height generating function here. So when we don't divide our inputs, we get a high frequency output where the terrain goes up and down a lot. But as we increase the dividing number, our output becomes much lower frequency with the ups and downs being much more spaced out. So I'm going to stick with dividing the inputs by four for now because I think that gives a fairly nice output, but it's a little bit too smooth at the moment and perhaps it doesn't look quite that natural. Our terrain at the moment looks something like this, whereas a more realistic terrain might look something a bit more like this. Although the overall shape of this terrain has a low frequency, you can see that it definitely has some high frequency components in there as well. So to make our terrain more realistic, we're going to generate another noise function, which is twice the frequency of the first one. We'll then make the amplitude of this new function smaller, just by dividing the outputs by some number, and we'll then add it to the first function. So now our output will have an overall low frequency shape, but it also has some smaller high frequency components as well. So let's try this out in the code now. Firstly, we're going to create a float called total, which is going to keep track of the overall output. And to start with, we'll just set that to the output of our original noise function. We're then going to add to that a second noise function, and we want this to be double the frequency of the first one, so we'll halve the dividing numbers here. And we also want to make the amplitude smaller for this higher frequency function, so I'm going to divide the amplitude by 3. And we aren't just limited to one extra noise function, we can actually use as many as we want. So I'm going to add another noise function here, which is again double the frequency, and again one third of the amplitude. So let's go ahead and run that, and you can now see that the terrain is looking pretty nice now, with both high and low frequency components. 
The final thing that we're going to want to do this week is to create a general version of this so that we can easily change the number of noise functions and things like that without having to actually alter any of the code. There are a couple of things that can affect the generation as well as the amplitude and we're just going to create some constants up here for them. So firstly there's the number of noise functions that we want to use and these are actually also known as octaves and I'm going to set this to three octaves for now. And then there's the amount that we decrease the amplitude by for each higher frequency octave and this ends up basically being how rough the terrain is. I'm going to choose a value of 0.3 here so that each octave will have an amplitude of 0.3 times the amplitude of the previous octave but you can choose whatever value you want. Finally you just need to create a general version of this method and I've made an example one here which you can copy down if you want or you can download the source code from the description. So that is pretty much it. You should now be able to generate some very nice looking random terrains and you can play around with the amplitude, octaves and roughness values until you get a terrain shape that works for you. You can also use this system with multiple terrains if you want and in the description I've provided a slightly improved version of the heights generator class which you can use to do just that. So the only changes that you have to make are that when you create your heights generator for each terrain it needs to take in the grid x and grid z coordinates of the terrain, it also needs to take in the vertex counts that we set earlier and it needs to know the seed and this seed must be the same for all of your terrains to make sure that they all use the exact same noise function. So that is it for this week. Next time we're going to be making a start on shadows and that video should be out in two weeks time. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.